Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. A while ago I shared a post with you asking which airframe you use the most in your runs. And I expected small airframes to win, although probably not by such a large margin. But in any case, your comments made me more curious about this topic and I decided to explore it more. So who was right? Is it better to go for small airframes or medium airframes? Since then, I created a testing scenario and ran several tests in order to determine which fighters offer the best value. Before we get into the details, and I'm not going to lie, this will be a bit of a technical video, let me give you a quick answer. Now, if you have been following my recent guides, and by the way, I would recommend watching my plane designs guide since it is closely related to this topic, I will include the link up here and in the description of the video. Well, you probably already know what I'm going to say. You were both right, small airframes and medium airframes are both totally fine and viable in most scenarios. So which one is better depends uh, on the context and on your playstyle. However, in terms of pure value, we can say that small airframes tend to perform slightly better, to offer better results. That being said, let me introduce you my testing scenario and mention some important considerations before we get into the actual designs. Okay, so this is the spreadsheet. Uh, please uh, consider that I will keep updating this uh, spreadsheet as I test more and that you can also access it if you purchase the tier 2 membership to the channel. If you find this video interesting by the way or if you wish to help the channel, please uh, do not forget uh, to leave a like and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments what you think about these tests. Before we get into the numbers here, and as I say, this can be quite complicated at first, uh, let's see uh, the testing info and the aspects to consider. First of all, we tested all of the designs in the same way. We always started with a total of 1000 units without reinforcements and without training, meaning they had a minus 15% buff to air attack, agility and night operations. They were left on air support in the same region, I will show you in a bit uh, in the game, uh, for a period of uh, one month, then three months, and finally one year. The opponent was also using 1000 of my F2 planes, and both us and the opponent had fully unlocked air spirits, air crew surveys and centralized control, and doctrines, battlefield support, left side. Now, some of the important aspects to consider. While the debuffs for the lack of training are the same for all designs, they have a larger impact on more expensive designs since they start with higher base stats. We could also say that this is a bigger uh, damage for medium airframes than for small airframes since usually medium airframes are more expensive and they offer better stats. Another aspect to consider is that I gave uh, the AI uh, 1000 of my F2 designs for the test. However, we should consider that the AI designs are usually much worse than my F2 and this tends to advantage more expensive designs in our testing scenario. Another thing to consider is that in our scenario range did not play a major role. This is important because range would probably be one of the main reasons to choose medium airframes over small airframes. Another thing to consider is that we only tested air superiority but another reason to choose medium airframes is usually interception. Medium airframes tend to be better for interception. They tend to be better when you don't have the air superiority, but we didn't test any of that here. Finally, a lower production cost should in theory mean more planes in the sky, which is generally more beneficial than having less, more powerful ones. So this advantages more expensive designs in our testing scenario, since we always started with 1000 planes. I will explain how I calculate the production cost in my spreadsheet but before that let me show you a bit what I meant about range in game. Okay so here we can compare the range of my F1 MG design and my medium F1 range design. Let me also show you the two designs. This is our F1 MG design. This is probably the most common plane that I usually make in the early game. And this is the medium F1 uh, range. This uh, plane has uh, the extra fuel tanks and it is a medium uh, airframe, so it has much higher range. So uh, what we did uh, is we assigned our planes always from the same area, from Northern Italy to Southern France. I found this uh, region to be quite uh, strategic for this test because uh, as you can see, the larger airframes cover it entirely while the smaller airframes only have a partial coverage of the region. 
Now, let me tell you right away from my testing, there was not a big difference uh, in terms of the two. So, generally speaking, uh, planes which had better stats or were cheaper, but had only a partial coverage of the region, performed better than more expensive planes with a full coverage of the region. And that's why I say that range did not play a very important role in our testing. However, range is important in many other ways. For example, let's imagine a scenario in which uh, this airfield is full and we don't have this other one. So the closest one to the front uh, is uh, Venezia here. Now, if we send our small airframes uh, to uh, Venezia, we can no longer reach Southern France. We are out of range uh, from uh, Southern France. This means that if this airfield is full and we have some other planes that we want to assign to Southern France, if they are small airframes, we cannot do that. On the other hand, if we do the same thing but with uh, large airframes, uh, as you can see, we can uh, easily reach uh, Southern France. So this is one uh, example of the advantages that uh, higher range can give you. You can actually assign more planes uh, to the same region if you have higher range, because they can reach the region from uh, further away airports. Now, this is an example in Europe uh, in which usually range is not an issue because it's full of airfields uh, and uh, the regions are fairly close to each other. However, this may be a big issue if you're playing, say, as Japan and you need uh, to reach these islands with your planes. Uh, at that point, uh, the question may not even be which design offers the best value, but rather which design actually can get there. And uh, you may be forced uh, to go for medium airframes uh, with range modules in order to reach the areas you need to cover. And that's also why I say at the beginning of this video that uh, which one is better depends on the context and on your place. So if you're fighting in the Pacific, you want extra range, then of course the range-oriented designs are going to perform better for you. In our testing scenario, the only difference between uh, high range and low range was the coverage of the region we assigned them to. Okay, now let's go back uh, to our spreadsheet and let me explain you briefly how I calculated especially the offensive performance and the average value. So what I did was, uh, uh, first of all, I included the cost for uh, the production cost for each of uh, the designs. And then I added the planes remaining. So this is uh, the total, which is always 1000 minus the planes we lost after the first month the planes we destroyed, the enemy planes we destroyed after one month. And for the defensive performance, I divided the amount of planes we had left by the production cost to get an idea of the defensive performance of our planes. For the offensive performance, I divided the enemy planes destroyed by the production cost. So we get the offensive performance. For the average value, I calculated the average between the two, offensive and defensive performance. Now, value is not the only thing that matters, so let's briefly talk about that. If we look at the average value here after one month, uh, let me tell you right away, one month is not entirely reliable, it's better to check three months and one year for more reliable uh, results. In any case, if we check the average value after one month, we could see how the cheapest designs clearly have an advantage. These two are the cheaper designs, the F1MG and the orient uh, range-oriented F1 and they, they only cost 25, they have the, be the best average value, mostly because we didn't lose that many of these planes, so the defensive performance is amazing. However, if we look at the offensive performance, we can already see how other designs, especially the medium airframe designs, have a better offensive performance. In fact, they killed, they destroyed a lot more enemy planes. Now let's go straight to the end, uh, to the one year results uh, to compare them and let's see how this changed uh, over the course of one year in favor of more expensive and better designs. So here if we compare the F1MG and the medium F1MG, so this design uh, which I showed you earlier for the F1MG and uh, this design for the medium F1MG which uh, has a lot of turrets to increase air attack and air defense it doesn't have any range modules, but it still has better range. We can see that both in terms of uh, planes remaining and planes destroyed, the medium airframe performed significantly better. However, if we look at the defensive performance, since the, the small airframe F1 is much cheaper, the defensive performance is actually better for the F1MG. The offensive performance is fairly similar, but uh, in favor of the medium F1MG. 
and if we look at the average value we can see that the uh, medium f1 is actually offering a better value than the small airframe f1 but to better explain uh, the idea of uh, value and why value is not the only thing that matters i would like to compare the medium f1 mg and the medium f1 mg nt what does that mean nt simply means not turrets so i use the same design but without all those turrets which means uh, it has slightly less air attack in air defense but it is also cheaper now if we compare these two designs uh, we can see that the average value like for the other ones tend to be in favor of the cheaper one especially early on and then the more we continue the closer they get uh, until the end uh, after one year basically they have the same exact uh, average value what does this mean how do we read this data the meaning is uh, that uh, more expensive designs tend to perform better the longer you use them which also makes sense in terms of the experience they get uh, if they are more expensive they will destroy more planes they will lose less planes uh, they will gain more experience they will have even beefier stats uh, by the end of the year two years three years of work so the longer the war goes, uh, the better, more expensive designs become. But what I wanted to show you here is that in terms of average value, even after one year, the uh, design without turrets, the cheaper design, has a slightly higher average value and a slightly better offensive performance. But if we look at the stats, the mere stats, well, the F1 MG with the turrets uh, did destroy more enemy planes, and it also lost less planes. So if we're looking at the numbers here, the best design is clearly the medium F1MG. If you're looking at the value, the best design here is the medium F1MG without turrets, because it was cheaper. And the reason I put in green, ah, by the way, these uh, colors here, green means uh, absolutely viable, orange means more situational, red means usually not good, but again, situational. As I said earlier, most of these designs are actually good and they are absolutely viable. But the medium F1 range in our scenario did not provide enough value because we didn't need the extra range. So uh, that's why it is uh, currently in red here. The other ones all had similar, very similar performances. Uh, but in the end, uh, I consider this one to be slightly better. Why the uh, F1MG if it has uh, less value than the other ones? Well, because as I said earlier, usually having more planes in the sky offers some advantages over having less planes in the sky. I would say that overall having more planes is better than having less planes because uh, with more planes you can cover more theaters, you can assign them to more areas. Uh, especially in the early game having more planes is better. Later in the game I find having more expensive planes to be better because often in the late game the issue is actually the space. Yeah? You run out of airfields to fill with uh, your, your planes. You cannot deploy all of them. So at that point it's better to have less, more expensive ones. But in the early game, it's usually better to have more cheaper planes than less expensive ones. So basically, that's why I considered all of these designs viable. So what was surprising here, these are the 1936 designs. What surprised me the most here is that actually the medium fighters, the medium airframes, actually heavy fighters, medium airframes, performed very well. In fact, I would say that the medium F1MG is probably the best design you can make in 1936. At the beginning of this video, I say that small airframes have a bit of an advantage in terms of value. Let's see why by checking what happens in later uh, designs with later years. Now, first of all, I compared uh, three designs with uh, cannons uh, because some countries, uh, Germany is one of them, I think the Soviet Union is another one, start uh, with the cannons already unlocked. And uh, what we found out is that uh, using cannons is worth it. So all of the designs with cannons perform better than the designs without cannons. Let me also briefly show you in game. So this is the F1 with uh, cannons, with one cannon, well actually two cannons here in one module. And then I tested, this is a design that I shared in my guide, but then I tested this other design, which is entirely air attack oriented. So we used two uh, cannons, but we didn't have any space for additional modules. And actually this proved to be the best design. So save this design because this is the best possible design you can make if you have access to cannons. And then I also made a similar design for a medium airframe. So this is our cannon oriented uh, medium airframe or heavy fighter. Now let's go back to the spreadsheet and look at some numbers. So as you can see the production cost difference between the one cannon and two cannons is uh, very minor. It's only one and if we look at the stats uh, from the very beginning 
the more cannons perform better, they kill more enemy planes, and by the end of the year, the difference between the two was quite massive. 201 enemy planes destroyed with double cannons and only 139. Also planes remaining was a lot in advantage of the double cannons. So what this says is simply that the best value overall in 1936 is given by this small airframe with two cannons. If we look at the medium F1 with cannons, it did perform well. It performed better than uh, its equivalent uh, with turrets and uh, uh, machine guns. However, the production cost, uh, the extra production cost compared uh, to the F1 uh, cannons made it so that it had uh, a worse offensive performance and average value than the other one. So here you can see how these small airframes start getting a bit better value than uh, the medium airframes. And actually the more we continue, the more the uh, small airframes perform better, especially my F2 design, which we will see in a bit, uh, but which confirmed to be probably overall the best design in the game at the moment. First of all, however, somebody suggested in the comments to my main guide that I should also make some 1938 designs for when or if you decide to rush some of the technologies. So if we decided to rush these technologies here, the uh, heavy MG and the survivability studies before we get the improved small airframe and the engine strip. So if we did that, we could make a design which I called F1.1 and which is uh, this one uh, so basically we don't have the improved the improved small airframe yet we don't have the engine type 3 but we have the machine guns and we have uh, the sub ceiling fuel tanks i did the same thing also for our medium f1 so we used uh, uh, heavy machine guns instead of the light machine guns and we used the self ceiling fuel tanks back to our spreadsheet we can see how the performance is uh, significantly better for the uh, f1.1 so the small fighter performed better a lot better in terms of average value and even offensive performance at the end of the first year of uh, fighting but actually the medium f1.1 the defensive option performed uh, quite well as well you can see here the offensive performance is very similar between the two. In terms of stats, of course, the more expensive designs tend to perform better, although in this case you can see the defensive performance was better for the uh, small airframe than it was for the medium airframe. The reason I highlighted these two columns is that I consider them to be the most uh, significant ones. The defensive performance is not very consistent, so it's better usually to check the offensive performance and the average value to get an idea of what's going on. Here you can see the offensive performance being similar but still in favor of the uh, smaller airframe one. And by the way, when, the small air, uh, when small airframes have a very good offensive performance, as I said earlier, they are usually better than their larger counterpart because you can make more of them. Let's get into the 1939 range, probably the most important one because this is where most of the games will be decided. This is the World War II time. And this is where my F2 design performs the best. In fact, in this case, uh, that's the only one I colored in green uh, because it was significantly better than anything else. As a reference, uh, this is the F2 design that I'm using. And I made several changes uh, to this design uh, to see how it would perform, for example, with a turret uh, instead of uh, the uh, self-sealing fuel tanks. So I also tested uh, this design. And uh, I tested this design also without modules entirely. So I tested it uh, like this uh, to see how the performance will change. Let's go back to the spreadsheet and see what happens. So the F2L is the version without uh, uh, rubber, with low rubber, so without self sealing fuel tanks. And the F2 chip uh, is the version without uh, any defensive module at all. So you can see that the production cost is the same between these two. Uh, but of course, we must consider that this one costs uh, twice as much rubber than this one. This can be a very, very important difference, but it depends on your run. If you're playing with a country that has access to rubber, or a country like Germany, which can produce rubber, then you don't care. If you really cannot produce enough rubber, then this design may be a necessity over the other one. Uh, what I colored in red was the F2 chip because uh, not adding any modules did not prove to be uh, worth it, in my opinion, in any case. We can see the difference between the three right here. 
So in terms of enemy planes destroyed, there is quite a big difference between the three. And in terms of our planes remaining also, the F2 performed significantly better than the other ones. So if we go and look at the average value, especially in terms of offensive performance, the F2 is much better than the other ones. To the point that, in my opinion, it is worth making less F2 than making more F2 without rubber. So that's why I would always, I would always import some extra rubber and stick to the F2 rather than making the design without the rubber. Now, here is where the medium fighters uh, did not really prove uh, to be great uh, value. We tried the medium F2, the medium F2 without turrets uh, to make it a bit cheaper. And uh, well, in this case, actually, the one without turrets performed better than the one with turrets, even offensively, which shows uh, some inconsistency in these results. Uh, of course it performed better than uh, the F2, but the production cost is uh, significantly higher. So in the end, in terms of offensive performance, uh, as you can see, the F2 was a better design. Does this mean that the medium airframe is not viable in 1939? No, absolutely not. It is very good. In fact, if you look at the stats, it performed very well. But in terms of value, the F2 is better. Now, in order not to make this video too long, I will not go into detail for the later designs. The testing was a bit more inconsistent for them. What I can say very quickly is that in terms of F3, so the 1943 designs, all of them performed very well, starting from the F3, which is the small airframe, and going to the medium F3, which is the medium airframe and they all had very good performance. We can see how the medium airframe destroyed the most enemy planes. And here there is something to be considered, something that also applies to the later designs. Now, the enemy only had 1000 fighters, so there was a limited amount of fighters that we could destroy, which probably limited the performance of some of these more expensive designs. I mean, they literally could not kill more than these planes. So the offensive performance is uh, crippled uh, by the fact that they couldn't kill more and uh, that uh, they cost more. You can see, however, that uh, the medium F3 also lost uh, fewer planes uh, than the F3 uh, and it had, uh, therefore, a much better defensive performance, which means in the end the overall average value was uh, very close. If you ask me, uh, I think with more enemy planes, uh, the medium F3 would probably outperform uh, the F3. As I said, this video was a bit technical, it was a lot of number, a lot of names, uh, probably a bit confusing, I apologize about that. Uh, you can check this spreadsheet by, by yourself, uh, you can rewatch this video or you can access it if you purchase the membership. So what I wanted to say is that the medium airframes actually surprised me, especially in the early game where they offered the best performance in my opinion. But actually, if we look at all of the ranges, we can see that there is always a medium airframe uh, either in green or in orange, which means absolutely viable. So sometimes, most of the time, let's say, the small airframes offer a better value, as I said earlier, but the medium airframes offer, offer better final results, offer better final stats. And uh, they're always viable, all of them. Uh, in fact, as you can see, the only designs which are not really viable or that I colored in red uh, are the F1 cannon, simply because the F1 with two cannons performs better. And uh, the uh, F2 chip, simply because it's better to add at least uh, some modules to this one. And then uh, the range-oriented designs, but that's again because we did not we did not need the range in this uh, specific scenario. So when you need range, these designs are also going to perform very well. For the actual designs, as I said, you can find uh, most of them, at least uh, the more viable ones, the better ones. Uh, you can find them in my uh, dedicated guide. Uh, this video was a bit different from my usual videos, so I would really like to hear your feedback. Let me know if it was uh, too confusing and uh, if you think uh, I could do something different uh, to make it a bit easier to follow. It was very technical, as I said, a lot of numbers, a lot of names, so it makes sense uh, that it was a bit confusing. Overall, whatever you're using, uh, if you're using my designs, going for medium airframes or small airframes, don't worry, they're very good. Uh, they will perform amazingly, regardless of the type, uh, so in the end you can really enjoy the game uh, whichever design you make, as long as it makes sense. It applies to basically everything in the single player of uh, Hoi 4. If you make something that makes sense, it will perform well. So you can have fun with it. 
that's all for this video but if you would like to see more videos like this more testings even uh, with uh, infantry templates uh, other plane designs you can suggest them in the comments uh, you can let me know and i will uh, do more testings otherwise probably for the next few weeks i will go back to country guides and uh, regular runs because i have a couple in mind you already know about uh, usa and brazil thank you for watching guys uh, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next video bye bye